All right, area under the graph of a non-negative function. So remember, when we see this notation, so far I haven't taught you any other way to do this besides to use a Riemann sum. And Riemann sum is really our only choice for now. So what I want to show you is the next trick we can use. Remember, this is simply saying find the area under the graph if it's a non-negative function. This function is non-negative, meaning it's positive or zero, over this interval. So because this is a positive function, this is going to be the area under the curve. So recall, we could approximate the area under a curve using a finite Riemann sum. We can now define the area under the graph of a positive or zero, non-negative, integrable function to be the value of the definite integral. So the area is the definite integral, the Riemann sum. Now, do you want to do the Riemann sum to this? Probably not, because this is actually a special case. If we were to graph this, which I'm going to do right now, let's just uh, plot these two points here. So if x is 1 half, what is the corresponding y value? So negative 2 times 1 half would be, and then plus 4. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So there's our first point. So if x is 1 half, y is 3. Let's see. And the other one, if x is 3 halves, then y is negative 2 times 3 halves plus 4 or negative 1 plus 4, which is, what did I do wrong? Oh, sorry, that would be negative, negative 3 there. Negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. So we go out to 3 halves, and our point is at 1. So here's our line. So, that is this function here over this interval. What this is asking us to find is the area under that, all the way down to the x-axis. So how do we find the area of this piece? Oh. Geometry. This is actually something you can find geometry, using geometry. This is a straight line, this is a straight line, this is a straight line. Basically what you have here is a rectangle underneath and a triangle on top. So the rectangle we find the area by doing base times height. The base from 1 half to 3 halves is 1. And the height is up to this point here, which is 1. So the area there is 1. For the triangle, the area of the triangle is 1 half of base times height. So 1 half, the base is still the full width, so that's 1. And the height goes from 1 to 3, or 2. So 1 half times 1 is 1 half times 2. The 2's cancel and we just get 1. So the total area here is the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle, which gives us a total area of 2. So that would be the definite integral here. All right. So that's 1. Uh, okay, let me go to my next page. Must be this one. There it goes. All right, this is a funky one. I'm going to show you what it is, and then you're know, just going to use that information if it comes up in your homework. So this is actually a semicircle. It is the positive square root, so it is the positive side of the semicircle. So that means it is in the positive y values here. Wee, that's supposed to be a top half of a circle, not an arc. Anyway, that's a half a circle. And then you just take the square root of this number here. That tells you how far to the left and how far to the right. That's the radius of your circle. So this is the shape that we have. This is the area we're trying to find. Well, this is just the area of half a circle. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared, and we want just the top half of that. Actually, no we don't because I didn't finish reading the directions. We only want from negative 5 to 0. From negative 5 to 0, that's just this section here. So this whole thing is half a circle. We only want a quarter of it. So we only want a quarter of the circle because we only want from 0 to negative, or negative 5 to 0. All right, so all we've got to plug in is r. r is the square root of the 25, so it's the 5. So 1 over 4 pi times 5 squared. So that's 25. Whoops. Twenty-five 
25 times pi over 4. And that would be the area of a quarter of the circle defined by this curve. So that's kind of cool. Alright, this one is taking it to another level. Absolute value of x, remember that is the, the V shape if you were to draw it. The negative flips it down, so it's a V opening down, and the 1 shifts it up one place. So this V is actually going to be, I mean, it continues on past this, but this is all we want. Because this V, when you shift it up 1, it now intersects at negative 1 and positive 1. If you don't believe me, plug it in. Negative 1, plug it in, that becomes positive 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and that's this point. If x is 1, we get 1 minus 1, which is 0, so that's that point. We want from negative 1 to 1, so we want that whole region right there. That's the area that we're looking for. Well, that's another shape we know. That's the area of a triangle. 1 half base times height. Well, what's the base of this triangle? From negative 1 to 1, that's a base of 2. And I said this shifts it up to 1, so our height is 1. 2 is cancel, and we end up with area of 1. Um, you'll see a couple of these in your homework. Um, as far as the test, you're going to have another way of finding these values. So you won't have to do the geometry on the test. On your homework, it will force you to do the geometry a little bit, but there's not very many of these. Uh, something that they do in our book, which is really silly, is they derive formulas for special cases. You don't need these formulas because we're going to actually be able to integrate very shortly. So if you want to do this homework section after you learn how to do the definite integral section, uh, which is 5.4, I think, um, it's the next section, then you're more than welcome to. But in your homework, you're going to see a couple times where they mention integrate using this special formula. Notice, it's very simple. They're, it's going to be the integral from A to B of C. You just plug in the C, you plug in A and B, and that gives you your answer. They're going to give you the formula. Um, a couple of them they don't. I think it was this formula they don't always give you. Again, same thing. A and B are right here. You just plug them into the formula if you're integrating something like this. So if you're integrating just a number, you use this formula. If you're integrating x squared, exactly x squared, you use this formula. Um, like I said, you don't need to memorize these. These will not be on the test. 